Alright. Well, as I said a little bit earlier, as I was preparing and praying for this sermon, uh, and it's, you know, tomorrow is Labor Day, this is going to be a, story, uh, a sermon about uh, labor, about working. Uh, and I said, God, what do you want, how do you want me to present this? What do you want me to do? It's, uh, you know, probably going to be talked about in every church around the country uh, today. And he just gave me a real piece about this. But this is going to be something I, I want to talk about. What I'm going to talk about is how what we do, we do for the Lord. Amen? If we are called to be followers of Jesus Christ, what we do in this world, we do it for Him, we do it for His glory, and when we do it for His glory, we receive the blessings that He wants to give us because we have worked and done for Him. And I said, that's, that's great, God. I, I love that. I think I can get behind that. Uh, nothing, nothing too hard or difficult about that. And then I was in, uh, I was getting ready this morning, I was in the shower, getting ready this morning, and I, and I, and I thought to myself, what if someone gets convicted by that? God said, don't worry about that. He's going to handle it. So that's what I said. If, if I'm, I'm just going to talk of what I think God has given me. I think it's going to be easy. I think it's going to be uh, good. I hope it inspires you. But I think there's a chance that there's going to be someone that can be slapped across the face by God this morning. That's all I'm going to say. And I think that's pretty cool. I, I like it when God slaps me across the face. Anyone else like that? Anyone like that? Good one. One person. Now, everybody, one, two, three. Oh, all right. I like that voice. Yeah. Uh, when God slaps you across the face, um, man, it's 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 one of those. Okay, that hurts. Plus, if God really slaps you across the face, that would be God. Um, but it's it's a conviction, right? It's it's it's, it's a wake up call. It's it's a it's it's a it's a man. I've got to change, or else God's going to keep hitting me. Uh, that's a good thing. Let the conviction of God, let the let those snacks across the face or the kicks in the butt or whatever God does to you, let them be something that compels you to do something for Him. He's, he's giving you something to do uh, that 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 is good. It's from God, and we we sometimes think we know better than God, and that's that's usually when we get those those wake up is when we start to, to, to maneuver our lives in such a way that says, I got this. I got I, I got this. In reality, if we just say, God, you got me. And I'm going to follow you. And I'm going to work for you. And I'm going to do what you want me to do. Then we will have this. We will have that peace and joy and satisfaction and life fulfillment and legacy building things that our children and our children's children and so on down the line will look back and say, that's the point. Right there. When my great, great, great grandparents follow God. And because of that, my parents and my parents' parents and so on down the line, they follow God. And now I've got this legacy to be able to follow into. And that's God's plan. He wants to bless generations to the thousands, is what he says in his word. Right? The sins of the Father, he says the sins of the Father carry on through three generations. That stinks. So my great-grandpa did something wrong, I've got to pay for a little bit of that, right? Unless someone breaks a streak, unless someone gets in there and says, nope, I'm following God, I'm going to break the cycle, right? So someone gets in there and does it, and then what does he say to the person who follows God? How many generations would bless? A thousand. Sin causes three generations. Blessings of God, thousand generations. Woo, that's good stuff. I want God's blessings on my life, I want them on my son's life, and I want them on for the future generations for however long God carries up in heaven before he comes back. I want God's blessings on my family. How do we get those blessings? Well, we follow God. How do we follow God? We know his word. How do we know his word? We read his I'm not going to ask you to show your hands, but how many have spent time in devotions this week? How many of you have spent time alone with God? Not just asking for what you want, but asking Him to show you what He wants based on the word that you just read. That's devotion. Are you devoted to God? 
sometimes, you know, we, 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 I, 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 I love reading other authors and, and, and writers and, and what they've got to, to say about the Bible. Um, I get a lot of ideas from those people. Uh, they're a lot smarter than me, and uh, I like to steal ideas. Uh, but it's not the Bible. It's not God's Word that I'm reading if I just read what somebody else wrote. I want to get into the Word of God because it is the Word of God that changes my heart. It is the Word of God that shows me that I've got to do something. And it's convicting. And sometimes it's a kick in the butt. And uh, those are okay. God is calling you to do something. Don't ignore it. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 35 through 58. It's kind of a, a lengthier passage that I normally read on Sunday mornings. Uh, but it, it ties in big time with what we're talking about. Why do we work the Lord? So I'm actually going to stop or start, so start at the end, verse 58, and then we're going to go back. Verse 58 from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor of the Lord is not in vain. Okay? That's a great verse. We've got to find out what that therefore means. In verse 58, the first word he uses, therefore. And remember, anytime there's a therefore or a so, you've got to find out what he's talking about. You've got to find the correlation. This is what happens, but why? You've got to find out why. So we're going to go back to verse 35. Keep that verse in mind. Someone will ask, how are the dead raised? What kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that you will sow. You do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives the body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, the stars another, and stars differ from star and splendor. So, so will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown, the bodies we have now, is perishable, and it is raised imperishable. Amen. It is sown in dishonor. We are born with sin, dishonor. It is raised in glory. Woo! That's good. It is sown in weakness. We are weak. I don't care how much you can bench press men, you are weak. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in true power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Every single one of us in our natural body, we all have a spiritual side, a spiritual body, a soul inside of us. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The last Adam is Jesus, by the way. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of this earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. That is big. You guys catch? So as we bear the image of Adam, the first Adam, from Adam and Eve, we are born into sin because of what Adam and Eve did. We bear that on ourselves. We are sinners. But when we allow God to change our lives, and Jesus has forgiven us of our sins, then we are raised from this earth. We are no longer bodies represented by the first Adam. We are then bodies represented by the second man, which is Jesus. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. You will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye, that at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, imperishable, and will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. Death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. 
But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Great passage of scripture. Uh, there's so much in there that we could go into, and I'm, I don't want to do it today because it's, 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 it's not in my realm of nice and easy today. Okay? But we were raised from the dead to life. Okay? I don't know what you believe. I, I, I hope everyone in here has given their lives to Jesus Christ. Um, I'm, I'm not foolish enough to believe that everybody has. But I believe that we as Christians, when we are in the ground, dead and buried, that we will have the opportunity to be raised to life. Jesus talked in that very, or Paul was talking about in that very beginning part of that passage, uh, that seeds that we plant into the ground. Farmers, uh, gardeners, you all know this, you put a seed into the ground, and that seed has to die for the plant to come out of it and come to life, right? The seed has to be done, it has to be broken open, that, and, and out of the ground comes the plant. I don't know enough about gardening or farming to talk about that, but that's what happens. And that's what Jesus was saying, Paul was saying, you put the seed in the ground, and out comes life. We have got to be willing to die to ourselves if we want to have life in this world, true life with Jesus Christ. And we can only get that if we devote ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. That's how we get the victory that we talk about there. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? There is no victory for death. There is no sting for death because the power of death is the law. Death is actually sin. And if we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, we don't have to worry about the sin that we are born with. And death does not get that victory. We get that victory because we have devoted ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Question that I want to ask you. How do you work for the Lord? I'm probably the, the one with the easiest answer to that question. Okay? You guys all have hard answers to that question. You guys have to provide for your family. You have to have a job. You gotta take care of your basic needs. All that stuff. You got fun time, entertainment, you got hobbies, all those stuff that you Paul talks about another spot in Corinthians. Whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And you gotta figure out how to one of, the, one of my favorite lines that I think I've ever quoted is, I want to mow my yard in such a way that whoever sees me mowing my yard believes that I'm mowing my yard for Jesus Christ. Okay? I want to shove my sidewalk that way. I want to, uh, if I was a, if I rode go karts, I want to ride go karts in a way that says, I love Jesus. And I don't know how to do that in every day. So we learn it. We change. We adapt. Figure out where God is. If you're an accountant, I hope you account as if Jesus is, 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 is right there with you. If you are a tow truck driver, I hope you're hooking up those cars and towing them with the love of Jesus Christ inside you. If you sit home and watch the TV all day, I hope you get God glory that you have a TV. You do that. Okay? Life, sometimes, we make it too difficult. We get so wrapped up in the fact that we've got to have a job. We've got to pay our bills. We've got to raise our kids. We've got to do all this stuff. We get lost. We get what gets lost. It's not that we have to do all things, all those things. It's that we get to. And it's a blessing. It is a pleasure. It is a gift from God. That we even have time to do that. We are on this earth to bring Him glory. We are not on this earth to pay bills. 
We are not on this earth to ride go karts. We're not on this earth to, to sit in a deer stand and go hunting. I, I enjoy doing those things. That's not why we are on this earth. That's not why you're sitting in this room. That's not why you go to your job every day. You go to your job every day because that's the job God has given you. And he has something there for you to do so that he can get glory. When we work for ourselves, when we have playtime for ourselves, when we just relax for ourselves, God does not get the glory. We miss out on a chance for someone to see us doing something for the glory of God. How can you give God glory in your, in your daily job? How can you give God glory in your daily tasks? the best of our ability. The Bible says that uh, we work as though we are working for the Lord. And I think that can game you play as though we are playing for the Lord. We relax as though we are relaxing for the Lord. Because God has given us even the day of rest. Are you taking that day of rest? Do you rest on that day? Do you give God glory for allowing you to rest right then? Work, play, live as if you are doing all of those things for God. And when we work for God, the sting of death is saved, the power of the sin of law. But thanks be to God, He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we have done the things that we need to do for Him. He has blessed you with the job, He has blessed you with the family, He has blessed you with free time and money and in all the things that we have in our lives. Those are all good gifts from God. Everything under the sun is a gift from God. Do you live as if He gave it to you? Or do you live as if you got it yourself? A little twerk, tweak, and attitude. There's no twerking going on. That little tweak in our attitudes. A little tweet that says, no, oh, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. It was God. It gave me the ability. God that did it through me. And I do all of these things. So somebody else can do things for me. Paul says in another place that I become all things to all men so that by any means I might save them. This life is not about you. This life is not about what you do, how you play, where you go on vacation, anything like that. This life is about how you do all those things and why you do all those things. If you just want to get through this life, try to spend 50 years working and retire, you waste 50 years. <coughs> God has a plan for you where you are at. Work as though you are working for the Lord so that the sin, the death, has no victory in your life. Death is not the end for any of us who put our faith in Jesus Christ. We will reap the reward based on how we work and play and live in this life. Stand with me, please. We're going to close the prayer. If you would like to go to the uh, thing at Oscar tonight, uh, let me know. You can text me. You can do whatever you want to do. I uh, will work it out. Um, but other than that, have a great, great weekend. I hope you have a great rest of your day today. Great night tonight. A great day tomorrow. Uh, if you have to work tomorrow, uh, sorry. Uh, but work until you work. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would. Slap us across the face and time to I pray that you would uh, give us a wake-up call when we need to do something different, when we need to change, when we need to uh, grow in our faith in you. Uh, when, 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 when Pharaoh had all of those opportunities to, to, to release the Israelites and to say, yes, you can have your people. And he turned his back in the same building. And you give him another one. 
another warning. Until finally, he loses his firstborn son. Lord God, do not let us be like Pharaoh. Show us what you want us to do. Kick us in the direction we need to go. And help us work and play and live as though we are doing all of those things for you. Because we are. Lord God, help us to have that, that proper attitude adjustment that says, Whatever I'm doing, this is for God. And the blessings that come from you are our reward. Lord God, we love you. We praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed.